<clears throat> Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Okay, that is good. So let's start. Um, uh, my name is Dramberova Yelena Gennadyevna. I am an associate professor of normal and topographic anatomy with operative surgery department. And I will deliver you some of the lectures on anatomy. Uh, so please, uh, I asking you not to write down your names into the chat because I see your names very clearly and later I will have statistics how much time you spent with me and I also uh, I'm also asking you not to try to go on air uh, to, because today only I will be on air you will demonstrate your knowledge on your practical classes and it takes time to I remove uh, to cancel all of your requests yes to go on air if you have any questions ask it in the chat so and during the lecture i will try to answer okay so let's let's start uh, our today lecture will be dedicated to ontogenesis you had the previous lecture and it was about anatomy as a subject you were talking about history of anatomy about methods of anatomy studying and so on. Our today's lecture will be dedicated to ontogenesis, so to process of development of human from the very beginning up to the very end. Um, this is not purely anatomical topic. This topic will be useful for you while you study histology, uh, biology, uh, uh, the uh, obstetrics and gynecology and uh, many other medical subjects but we will also use this information uh, at our every lesson of anatomy uh, at the beginning of each new topic we will use this information which we will discuss with you today so during this lecture we will discuss the following questions first We'll talk about main stages of intrauterine human development. And then uh, we will discuss age periods, a norm, variance, and anomalies. What is it? We'll talk about it. And then definition of the terms. At the very end, we'll talk about definitions of the terms organ, system of organs, uh, and apparatus of organs. Uh, I have already had some classes with general medicine students and we were trying to discuss what is it, organ, system of organs, and I don't know why, but uh, many of them felt some difficulties in explaining what is this, and actually organ is that what we will study in the whole anatomy, yes, it's like a subject of our research, organ for the anatomy. Okay, and so first of all, Let's start with the definition, what is ontogenesis? At uh, the practical classes uh, with some students, we have already said that medicine as well as anatomy is a very ancient science. And in ancient Greece and in ancient Rome, it existed. And that's why many medical and many anatomical terms, uh, they had Greek origin. Yes, certainly this lecture is for students who is in the first course, of course. If you, if there are some senior students, I don't mind if they attend the lecture, but actually they had it last year. Okay, so it is a Greek term, uh, ontos, it is, means an essence, and genesis means development. So ontogenesis, it is an individual development of the organism. It includes the set of morphological, physiological, and biochemical transformations from the moment of drumming up to death. So from the formation of a new organism, of a new cell, up to the death of the whole organism. And in the ontogenesis, mainly two periods are distinguished. 
the first period is embryonal period or prenatal period. Pre, it's Latin prefix that is means before. Natal means birth, yes. So prenatal period is that one that was before the birth. And uh, post embryonal period or postnatal, post means after, so it is after the birth. All of us are now in our post embryonal period. An embryonal period in different species lasts different time. In humans, uh, you know, embryonal period or intrauterine development or pregnancy, let's say so, uh, lasts about nine months, it, uh, about 28 to 42 maximum, maximum 42 weeks. And for all the mammals and, and including humans, um, this embryo, embryonal period occurs inside the maternal body, inside the uterus. Because in some species, like in birds, for example, yes, in birds, in turtles, in snakes, this embryonal period uh, occurs somewhere outside of maternal body, like in the eggs, for example. Or for fishes, it is inside the cavea. So, but, but for the mammals, specific features that um, a new organism uh, undergoes its development inside the maternal body, in, in mother's body, yes? So uh, embryogenesis, uh, it is a development of an organism from a fertilization of an ovum up to the going out of a new organism from an egg or from the uterus of a maternal organism into the environment. And as I have already told you, in humans, it lasts for 28 about for about 20 so, sorry 38 to 42 weeks in the embryogenesis or for mammals and for humans it is intrauterine development intra means inside yes uterine uterus it's like female reproductive organ where fetus um, grows up so in uh, intrauterine development, the following stages are distinguished. The first, the shortest stage is named germinal period or pre-embryonic period uh, that lasts for the first two weeks, um, so from the fertilization and up to the implantation usually. What is it? We'll talk about it later. Um, stage two is embryonic period. It lasts from the third week up to the eighth week. It's embryonic period. And during this time, uh, during this time, uh, this um, new organism is named an embryo. Here you can see it, an embryo. Mm -hmm. And uh, as, as the third stage, it is fetal period. Uh, fetal period lasts from the ninth week up to the birth, so up to the end of pregnancy. And during this time, this new organism is named fetus. So the main difference between embryo and fetus, that fetus already has all the systems of organs, though they are not completely developed, but they are present. So uh, from the beginning of the fetal period, formation of organs starts. And during um, existence of embryo, systems are being developed and tissues. The other division includes, uh, first, it is fertilization and cleavage of an ovum. Then second stage, it is gastrulation. That is a formation of germinal or embryonic, it has the name embryonic layers. And the third stage, it is histogenesis and organogenesis. So hista in Greek, it is tissue. Uh, so histogenesis and organogenesis, it is a formation of tissues and organs. It's the third stage. 
So everything starts from the fertilization. It's the beginning of a new life. Fertilization. You had to study it at school, yes, that um, during the sexual interaction, sperm cells are um, excreted to female genital tract, first into the vagina, then to the uterus, and sperm cells, you know that sperm cells, they are mobile, they have head and tail, and because of the vibration of their tails, sperm cells can move along the uterine cavity, and they enter uterine tube, this is uterine tube, you can see it, yes, uterine tube, and they enter uterine tube, where uh, later uh, they meet the ovum, so sperm cell is male sex cell and uh, ovum it is a female sex cell so i don't understand actually what's wrong mm, i'm sorry but yes this is a lecture for first year dentistry students and i sent the link to first year dentistry students how could second year dentistry students get this link i don't understand uh, Yes, I know that these groups, they came late, yes? And actually, if you want to stay at this lecture, you can stay, I don't mind. But if you have another lecture uh, at the same time, probably you should attend it. Don't you have another lecture this time? Okay, so ovum is a female sex cell, and it is produced in the ovaries. Uh, when ovum or oocyte, its other name, is mature, uh, follicle in the ovary, it blasts, and ovum goes out from the follicle. And it is, uh, after that, taken by means of fimbria of uterine tube. And ovum enters uterine tube, and later when we study reproductive system, we will say that Ovum is immobile, but in the uterine tube, there are special features, special, let's say, devices, which facilitate movement of the ovum towards the uterine cavity. So ovum slides along the lumen of uterine tube, and somewhere in the ampulla part, it meets the sperm cell, and fertilization occurs. Here you can see fertilization. What is it? It's like sperm cell um, dissolves membrane of the ovum and it injects its chromosomes, it, its genetic material into the ovum and genetic material of the ovum uh, joins genetic material of the sperm cell and thus um, new uh, cell, new organism is formed. So the result of the fertilization is a formation of a zygote. A zygote is a diploid fertilized cell which has the potential to produce an embryo. So you also studied it at school that all the cells of human body except sex cells, they uh, contain 46 chromosomes and sex cells both males and male and female sex cells they contain only 23 chromosomes it is um, gaploid set of chromosomes 23 and during the fertilization 23 chromosomes from the sperm cell and 23 chromosomes from the ovum or egg they join together and they form 46 chromosomes in 23 pairs. So they form a zygote, a cell that again has diploid set of chromosomes. And the zygote, after, new, after um, a long time, like after numerous processes, will later form an embryo. After the formation of a zygote, so it is only one cell, cleavage starts. Cleavage is a series of mitotic divisions of a zygote. And it lasts about um, four days. Four days. So uh, by means of mitosis, first one cell uh, is divided into two. Uh, and first, the first division takes a long time, about 30 hours. Then 
each of these two divide again and it is already for cell stage after 45 hours and after that cells start dividing faster and faster until uh, the third day yes on the third day it reaches the stage of the morula so it contains 46, uh, 64, sorry, or even 128 cells. And on the third day of embryonic development, this um, organism looks like a ball, uh, looks like a ball that consists of many very tiny small cells. Yes. Uh, what is important is that during cleavage, the cells do not grow. So the size of the zygote that consists of one cell is the same as the size of morula that consists of 128 cells on the third day. Uh, they do not grow, but they divide. They divide into many, many uh, parts. Uh, why is it so? Because um, during this time, the zygote and after that morula, they they slide they slowly move towards the uterine cavity, but they are still in the uterine tube, and they are um, supposed to pass through the narrowest part of the uterine tube, that is isthmus, and that's why they shouldn't grow because if they grow, they will stuck in the uterine tube, and then ectopic pregnancy will be developed and um, probably such a woman will die from the bleeding because the tube will finally blast. So the next stage after the morula, uh, on the fourth day, it is formation of blastula. So all the cells of the morula, they are divided into central cells and peripheral cells. Uh, so it is outer cell mass and inner cell mass. Outer cell mass, they form like a um, cavity, yes? And in the cell mass, they choose a pool, embryonic pool, uh, one part of this um, morula, and all of them are concentrated in that particular pool. So outer cell mass will later form the trophoblast. Trophoblast, uh, it is a tissue that will provide nourishment, nutrition of the embryo. Um, so these are provisor organs and in the cell mass form the embryoblast. Embryoblast, uh, it is uh, a part of the blastula that will later form an embryo. Between trophoblast and embryoblast, there is a cavity that is filled in with the liquid. Such a cavity is named blastocele. So blastula is the next stage of development of the embryo. And this blastula continues flowing along the uterine tube until it reaches the uterus. It usually happens on the 10th uh, or 14th day of the, of the intrauterine development, embryonic development. Um, ovum inside inside the ovum there are some nutrients but while zygote and then blastula moves along the uterine tube uh, this new organism has already consumed all of these nutrients and now this organism needs additional nutrients and these additional nutrients will be taken from the mucus from the internal membrane of the uterus for that implantation should occur, uh, means cells of the blastula, uh, cells of the new organism should invade into the mucosa of endometrium. So look, implantation, it is an invasion of the blastula into the mucous membrane of the uterus or endometrium. And usually it happens at the 11th or 12th day after the fertilization. So once again, I'm telling you, implantation is required to take the nutrients from mother, from the uterus, from the blood, to prevent death of this new organism. Uh, what's, hap what's happening next? 
so we said that our cell mass forms trophoblast and inner cell mass forms embryoblast. So trophoblast is further divided into outer duct layer without cell boundaries that is called syncytiotrophoblast and inner peel layer with clear boundaries that is called cytotrophoblast. In embryoblast also um, there is a division. So first uh, there are two layers which are named epiblast and uh, hypoblast. So epiblast will later form ectoderm, like external embryonic layer, outer embryonic layer, and this hypoblast will form endoderm, internal embryonic layer. And from an ectoderm, amniotic cavity is formed, like is another cavity that is named amniotic cavity. And the amniotic cavity, it is a special cavity where fetus will spend the whole pregnancy, like it will swim inside in this amniotic fluid like a fish, yes? And endoderm forms another cavity, that is yolk sac. Yolk sac serves for the excretion of the waste products, excretion of the waste products. So by the end of the uh, second week of pregnancy, uh, there are two trophoblast layers, that is syncytiotrophoblast and cytotrophoblast, two cavities, amniotic cavity and yolk sac, and two germ cell layers or embryonic layers, that is ectoderm and endoderm. That is the result of the second week of pregnancy. So it's very easy uh, to uh, memorize, yes? Two, 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 and also two, second week of pregnancy, yes? Okay, what's going on next? On the third week of embryonic development, primitive streak is formed. So uh, on the epiblast, on the outer side of the embryo, uh, thickening of the cells in the middle, in the very middle occurs, and it starts from the tail and from the posterior end of the embryo, and it starts moving anteriorly. From this primitive streak, middle embryonic layer will later be developed. So from the ectoderm, some cells start to migrate first to this primitive streak, and then from primitive streak between ectoderm and endoderm. And such a process uh, of formation of a multi-layered embryo or three-layered embryo is named gastrulation. Gastrulation. So uh, such an embryo that contains three embryonic layers is named gastrula. Now I want to show you the video that will um, describe all of these processes we have already discussed. In this video then we'll look at the beginning of development, looking into the ovary at an unfertilized egg. It then gets fertilized by sperm which travel down the fallopian tube. So here millions of sperm coming along. Several of them will hit the egg and try to penetrate it, but one will win, as it were, go into the nucleus, and then there's a reprogramming process where the male and female nuclei have their genes uh, set aside to be turned on and off for early development. Here you see early cleavage stages occurring, and this is one of the early growth phases. As the embryo moves down the fallopian tube, it's going to form an important stage called the blastocyst here in a few seconds. Of course, in real life that takes days, about five days. At this stage, then, I'd like to draw your attention to the inside of the blastocyst where there are cells called the inner cell mass, which I'll be abbreviating as ICM. Those are the cells that make the entire animal. And the outer cells give rise to the placenta and other supporting tissues. At this stage, the embryo implants into the wall of the uterus. This is when a pregnancy is really initiated. And now we'll see those blue inner cell mass cells form a disc. And then as the cells continue to grow, they change their physical positions, their kind of geographical relationship to one another. 
And you'll see that represented here as this disc gets transformed into an embryo. Those lines represent sites where cells are migrating in and out. And here's an important stage when the three beginning layers of the embryo, the so-called germ layers, are formed. And I'll come back to that in a few minutes. As development proceeds, there's more growth and movement of cells. It'll begin to form a neural tube. Here it turns and appendages start to bud out. You see the head forming and the eye. And then eventually we get a small embryo. And some months later, of course, this would be born as a young baby. OK, uh, I hope it was clear, yes? And after the formation of multi-layered embryo, now we should understand which exactly parts of our body we are formed from each of these embryonic layers because each embryonic layer gives origin to different organs and tissues. Like for example, um, entoderm is, uh, sorry, ectoderm gives origin to uh, skin cells of epidermis and to nervous system and pigment cell. And then mesoderm gives origin to muscles, uh, cardiac, skeletal, smooth muscles, and also to the organs of urinary system, as well as red blood cells. And endoderm gives origin to lung cells, to thyroid cells, so to some cells of um, parenchymous organs and um, pancreatic cell. And also it gives origin to endothelial layer of the digestive tract. Not only digestive, digestive tract and the respiratory tract, so to endothelial layer of in hollow internal organs. Uh, so uh, in the very middle of the mesoderm, along the midline, uh, not a cord is formed. Inside this not a cord, there is a small not a caudal canal. And so later notochord will be substituted by vertebral colon. If we know that uh, inside the vertebral colon, inside the vertebral canal, there must be a spinal cord. So now we should realize how exactly nervous system is formed. So process of nervous system or neural tube formation is named neurulation. And we, at the previous slides, we have already seen that nervous system neurons are developed from the ectoderm. So how exactly it is developed? On the dorsal surface of the embryo, some cells of ectoderm begin to proliferate to multiply rapidly. And they form thickening first. And this thickening is named, is known as neural plate. Then this neural plate, middle part of the neural plate, starts to invaginate, starts to move deeper, and margins of neural plate, they begin to arise. And so such a stage of uh, neural uh, nervous system formation is named neural groove. These margins are known as neural folds. Uh, the next stage is when neural folds join together, uh, these margins join together, and they lock, they like close this neural groove, and they transform this groove into the neural tube. And this neural tube separates from another ectoderm, moves deeper, and finally it enters not a caudal canal. Uh, Cells of ectoderm uh, from lateral side they move medially and they also close against the embryo. Uh, that is how neural tube is formed. With the time, at the cranial end of the neural tube, some enlargement appears, an enlargement that will later form the brain. Now I will show you another video about this process. Let's see. So nervous system starts to develop 
uh, on the fourth week, third or fourth, fourth week of embryonic development. So look, yes, here you can see um, primitive streak was formed. Now you can see first like uh, this neural groove. Yes, we will see. Mm -hmm neural groove and laterally from the neural groove we can see neural folds and with the time margins of neural folds they join together they form neural tube that goes deeper Yes, about formation of somites, we will talk later, now, uh, in a few minutes. Somites, they uh, are developed from the mesoderm, from the middle embryonic layer. And now you can see that on the fourth week, at the end of the fourth week of embryonic development, enlargement in the neural tube is formed that will later form uh, the brain. Later from the brain. A development of the brain in details we will study in the second year when we start studying nervous system. Okay. Yes, yeah, so yes, on the fourth week, besides the nervous system, some mites are also formed. Uh, some mites are formed from the mesoderm, but mesoderm is a very well developed embryonic layer. Several parts are distinguished in it. Like there is not a cord, yes, uh, in the very middle that will form vertebral canal. Then a little bit laterally from it, there is paraxial mesoderm. Para means near, axis, it's axis, yes, we have already understood. So that part that is very close to the middle, it is paraxial mesoderm. Then laterally there is intermediate mesoderm. And the most lateral part of mesoderm is named lateral plate mesoderm. So somites are formed from paraxial mesoderm. Um, about the 20th day, transverse grooves appear in the paraxial mesoderm and they divide it into somites or blocks. So existence of somites uh, remind us that we um, originated, all of us, uh, who lives on the earth, we originated from the same ancestor, yes? And during embryonic period, a uh, human embryo undergoes all the stages of evolutionary development. So the somites, they remind us that we and earthworms, for example, uh, they have, we have the same ancestor, yes? Okay, so these are somites, segments, like segments of paraxial mesoderm. By the end of the fifth week, 42 to 44 pairs of somites are formed. There are four occipital, eight cervical, 12 thoracic, five lumbar, five sacral, and eight to 10 coccygeal. So coccygeal somites in animals is respons are responsible for the formation of the tail. Uh, there, are, there is no tail in humans. That's why coccygeal somites, they degenerate. Uh, we, said um, in the we will say yes uh, in the vertebral colon there are only three to four coccygeal vertebrae and they are underdeveloped they are nearly not developed in spinal cord there is only one coccygeal segment because we have no teal we don't need to supply to send no fibers to it yes because we don't have it even and so in each somites several parts are distinguished so uh, there is scleratom, middle part it is scleratom, and it gives, will later give origin to connective tissue and bone cells. So it will form mesenchymes that will form bone cells later. Then there is myotome that will give origin to muscle cells, yes. And there is dermatome, so totally it is dermatome, but it consists, dermomyotome, but it consists of dermatome and myotome. So dermatome gives origin to the skin. So not to epiderm, epidermis. Epidermis is developed from the ectoderm, yes. But the other layers of the skin are formed by somites. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Intermediate mesoderm gives origin to organs of urinary and reproductive system, so kidneys and gonads. Gonads means genital or reproductive organs. 
And this fact that both uh, urinary organs and genital organs have the same origin uh, will give us um, an opportunity to unite it into a urogenital apparatus. We will talk about it at the end of our lecture. Lateral plate mesoderm uh, is divided into two main parts. Like that part that is closer to the ectoderm is named somatic mesoderm or somatopleura. It forms connective tissue and muscles and supportive elements of the body wall. Of the body wall. Splanchnic mesoderm, another one that is closer to the endoderm, endoderm. Splanchnic mesoderm or splanchnopleura forms serous membranes. Uh, such as pleura, pericardium, peritoneum, smooth muscles, cardiovascular system, all the layers of digestive tract except epithelium, because epithelium, as we have already said, is, uh, it is formed by endoderm. Uh, between somatic mesoderm and splenic mesoderm, there is a cavity that is named coelom. Coelom. Uh, it will form peritoneal cavity, for example, uh, uh, pleural cavity, pericardial cavity, and so on. Okay. So, uh, again, uh, we have already seen this picture, just it looks slightly in a different way. So, again, I'm telling you that ectoderm gives origin to epidermal cells of skin. But in other parts of, in other layers of skin, they are formed by um, somites, yes, by paraxial mesoderm. Uh, then ectoderm also gives origin to the neurons of nervous system and to pigment cells. Mesoderm is, is better developed and it gives origin to notochords that will form vertebral colon, yes, and then bone tissue and urinary organs, red blood cells, urinary and reproductive certainly organs, red blood cells and facial muscles. And endoderm gives origin to endothelium of hollow organs, such as stomach cells, for example, uh, intestinal cells, and also to parenchymous organs, thyroid, lung cell, and so on. And also there are germ cells, they are separately from all the other layers, like sperm cells and uh, ovum, uh, because they contain only gaploid set of chromosomes, only 23 chromosomes, so they are also um, developed in the embryo. Certainly they are not mature, because a uh, baby after the birth is unable to um, reproduct, yes, to produce another baby. The, like uh, first this species should reach the age of sexual maturation but like stem cells non-differentiated sex cells they are already present we'll talk about it when we study reproductive organs in the second semester there is one more tissue which you have to um, know about it is mesenchyme so mesenchyme uh, in humans is developed from the mesoderm so it, uh, these are cells which later differentiate into bone, cartilage, connective tissue, and adipose tissue, mesenchyme. We'll talk about mesenchyme in details at the next lecture. So what happens next? All of these things, like uh, histogenesis, formation of tissues, is complete by the end of the eighth week of embryonic development. But how is the embryo? How does the embryo look like at this time? Yes, what, so what can we see in the external appearance? So during the second month, by the end of the second month, all the different parts of the new individual have been formed. So we can see head, uh, trunk, legs, upper limbs, yes, we can see even eyes, yes. So morphogenesis, formation of different parts of the body, it is complete. The length of the embryo is very small. It's only about three centimeters. Uh, most of the body organs and systems are only partially functional. Only partially functional. So certainly, if pregnancy ends on the second month of embryonic development, 
such an embryo will not be viable. It will not be able to live outside of the uterus, outside of a maternal body. That's why pregnancy should last longer. So we said in humans, pregnancy lasts for about nine months. It is individual for every species. Yes, for example, for rats, two months are quite enough. By the end of the second month, um, viable small rats are born. For the elephants, pregnancy lasts about two years, so much longer than in humans. Yes? Okay. Uh, fetal period. Uh, what can we see here? Yes, it starts from the ninth week uh, of the embryonic development, and it lasts up to the birth. So here I want to pay your attention how rapidly, how fast fetus grows. So uh, on the 12th week of embryonic development, its length is about um, eight centimeters, yes? And it, by the moment of birth, it's about 50. Average height of the newborn is from 48 to 52 centimeters. So it increases its size during fetal period six or seven times. We will never grow so fast um, till the rest of our lives. Like fetal period, actually the whole embryonic period, it is a period of the fastest growth, of the fastest growth. And that's why any influences from outside, from external environment, may cause some anomaly, some mutations that will affect existence and health of this uh, organism. We'll talk about this anomalies later. So on the 20th week of embryogenesis, the fetus is seven to nine centimeters in length and its weight is about 28 grams. And we can even distinguish fingers and tooth and placenta, that is special provisor organs, yes, that um, gives nutrients and oxygen to the fetus, it is complete. And fetal circulation is also complete, so blood vessels and heart. Uh, ossification appears, so some bones, um, we'll talk about it at the next lecture. Uh, they are formed from connective tissue or, and uh, some of them undergo stage of cartilage. And on the 12th week of embryogenesis, some bones become bones real. Yes, like they consist of bony tissue. And formation of nails begins uh, on the 20th, 20th week, 12th, sorry, 12th week of embryogenesis. Uh, 16th week, of embryogenesis. Uh, at this time, fetus is 10 to 17 centimeters in length and its weight from 55 to 120 grams. And on at this age, usually sex or gender can be differentiated. And for example, in Russia, our ultrasound specialists, as they can easily identify the gender of a fetus and they can inform the parents about this gender. But in some countries, for example, in India, I know um, it's prohibited to inform parents about the gender of their future baby. Um, so that's why they are waiting for the moment of birth to see who, who will be born, um, boy or a girl, yes? So rudimentary kidneys uh, start to secrete urine at this time, and we can identify heartbeat when we use special instruments, stethoscope, we can put it onto the abdomen of a woman, yes, and we can hear the heartbeat of a fetus. Uh, and face acquires a human shape, so it looks like a human now, not like a monster, not like an animal, yes, it looks like a human face. On the 20th week of embryogenesis, fetus is 25 centimeters in length and its weight is 223 grams. And lanuga hair, or like a fur, yes, very small hair, they cover entire body, the whole body. So everywhere there is a lanuga. Uh, in Russia, according to the laws of Russian Federation, 20 weeks of embryogenesis, it is such a gestational age, such a time, after which fetus or this newborn is considered to be viable. 
you know, we have already discussed it, that normal pregnancy lasts 38 to 42 weeks. But sometimes, due to some reasons, uh, it can last shorter. And if in Russia, in Russia, a woman gave birth after the 20 weeks of embryogenesis, after the 20 weeks of gestation, uh, doctors should save life of such a child. In the other countries, like USA, for example, um, this age is 22 weeks of embryogenesis because it's considered that um, it's like 20, after 24 weeks of embryogenesis, um, baby will be much healthier and chances for his or her survival will be much higher. And it's true, but still we are trying to save every life. And so in Russia, it is from the 20th week of embryogenesis. So 24th week of embryogenesis, fetus is 28 to 36 centimeters in length, and its weight is 680 grams, and skin appears wrinkled, and eyebrows and fingernails develop. So uh, actually they appear, you remember, from the 12th week, yes, but now they um, develop very well, these nails. Then on the 28th week of embryogenesis, uh, fetus is 35 to 38 centimeters in length, and its weight is about 1,200 grams, and his skin is red, and he can open and close his eyes. And we have now this 3D or even 4D ultrasonography at which we can even see easily, yes, how this baby opens eyes and closes. 32nd week of embryogenesis. At this time, fetus is 38 to 43 centimeters in length and its weight is 1.5 to 2.5 kilos. So fingerprints, are set and active fetal movements occur. Actually, a wo pregnant woman starts feeling movements of the fetus from the 20th week of embryogenesis, but they are not very active. They are hardly felt, hardly felt. But on the 20, 32nd week, they are felt very easily. Like sometimes woman even feels pain when, um, a fetus it beats with his hand or with his leg yes pushes pushes and sometimes it's even very painful for the pregnant woman because um why are movements why do movements become so active because fetus grows and uterus cannot expand so so much so a fetus starts feeling the limitations of the uterine cavity like he is surrounded every way by uterus. He wants to move, but he cannot move so easily. Yes, and that's why woman starts feeling this, his movement. Subcutaneous fat is deposited. That's why these wrinkles, which existed uh, four or eight weeks ago, they um, disappear. And in the male fetus, testes begin to descend into scrotum. So testes, which in um, by the moment of birth they should be in the scrotum why we will also discuss it when we study reproductive system so the big process of the beginning of the descent starts on the 32nd week of embryogenesis uh, 36th week of embryogenesis at this um, time fetus is 42 to 49 centimeters in length and its weight is about 1.9 to 2.7 kilos and lanuga, this hair that covers the whole body, is a dis it disappears, and amniotic fluid decreases, and red color of the skin becomes pale. So this amniotic fluid, we are um, baby with this fetus swims. Yes, its amount decreases uh, by the 36th week of embryogenesis, and on the 40th week of embryogenesis. Fetus is 48 to 52 centimeters in length, and its weight is 3,000 grams. Actually, nowadays, due to a wrong diet of the woman, um, 
fetuses, they are even larger. They can weigh 3.2, 3.6, 3.8 kilos, uh, but four kilos is too much, yes? If fetus weight is four kilos, uh, he is named a large fetus, large fetus, and in this case, caesarean section is indicated because he will not be able to pass through the pelvis of woman. Skin is smooth because there is much subcutaneous fat, yes? And so bones of skull are ossified and nearly together at sutures. Uh, with um, general medicine groups, we also we are at the museum and we saw skulls of the newborn and we uh, saw them, uh, we saw there that bones are connected by means of sutures, um, not only by means of sutures, but also by means of fontanelles. Uh, it's like connective tissue membranes. And these membranes, they are necessary for the fetuses because head, we can see it in this even picture, yes? Head is the largest part of the body of fetus. And during the labor, during the childbirth, head can stuck in the female pelvis. And that's why these fontanelles, they allow a slight movement of one bone uh, around another bone in the skull and it facilitates movement of the fetus, exit of the fetus from the female pelvis. And so usually uh, at this term, yes, um, birth should start, childbirth. So normal term pregnancy lasts generally between 37 and 42 weeks. So in humans, yes, it's about this time. If it is more than uh, 42 weeks, such a birth is named uh, post-mature birth. And if it is less than 37, it's um, premature birth. And if, yes, if more than 42, it's also named prolonged pregnancy. Prolonged pregnancy. You will study it in obstetrics, okay. And so after the birth, post-embryonal period starts. And so post-embryonal development include the period of life from the moment of birth uh, till the end of life. And the following periods are included into post-embryonal development. So first it is childhood or juvenile period. And according to WHO, World Health Organization, a childhood lasts from the moment of birth up to the 19 years. And the following stages are distinguished in it. So there is neonate or newborn. It is from the birth up to the 28 days. Then infant or baby uh, from the 28 days up to the 12 months, one year, yes. Then the next one, it is toddler, one to three years. And play age, three to five years. Uh, after that, primary school age from six to 11 years. Adolescence from 12 to uh, 19. So adolescence uh, completes the childhood. After that, adulthood starts. So adulthood, it's 20 plus. Yes, 20 plus years. So in the adulthood, young adulthood is distinguished from 20 to 39. Then middle adulthood from 40 to 60. Then uh, elder or senior citizen, which are 60 plus, more than 60, yes. And then centenarians, 90 plus. Not all of us will be so lucky to reach, uh, to become centenarians, yes? Because the end of any life is death. And death is unfortunately unpredictable. So all of us want to live long and happy life, but it's, it's not always um, possible, unfortunately. But we'll try, we'll try. Okay, that was about ontogenesis. Uh, now, oh, yes, we are going on and we are moving on to the third question of our lecture. So what is norm, variance and anomalies? Uh, on the first and on the second years um, of medical faculty, you will study normal anatomy. So that's what we are actually studying now, yes? And normal anatomy studies norms. You have to know what is a norm. So norm is the most common variant of the structure of the human body which provides proper functioning of an organism. It is norm. 
but all of us are different. Yes, some of us are short, some of us are tall, some of us are slim, some of us are slightly larger than the others. Yes, and uh, still we all think that we are normal. We hope so, yes. That's why norm, it's not something very narrow. It's a wide range, rather wide range of norms. And in norm, there are different variants. So variant is a deviation from the most common cases of norm that do not cause any disorders in human organism. So if, yes, we are different, but both of us are healthy, means just I have one variant and you have another variant of norm. And variants are also studied in normal anatomy. And at the first practical lesson in normal in uh, anatomy, uh, you will discuss such a case, for example, sacralization. It is the variant of the structure of the vertebral column. You studied at school that usually uh, in the vertebral column, there are five lumbar vertebrae and sacrum also consists of five sacral vertebrae. But sometimes the fifth lumbar vertebra gets fused with the sacrum. And in this case, there are only four lumbar vertebrae and sacrum consists of the six sacral vertebrae. So such a variant of norm is named sacralization when the fifth lumbar vertebra gets fused to the sacrum. Person can live with such a variant for the whole life without even knowing about it because it doesn't cause any pathology, it doesn't cause any disease. An opposite variant is lumbalization, when the first sacral vertebra does not fuse with sacrum and it looks like the sixth lumbar vertebra. So in this case, we say that uh, there are six lumbar vertebrae and sacrum consists of only four sacral vertebrae. Uh, so such a variant is named lumbalization. Um, but if uh, there is a deviation from norm that causes disorder of organism, it is known as anomaly. Anomaly is not normal. It's abnormal. It's anomaly. Yes. And anomalies can be minor and they are cosmetic in this case and major. And then they are life or health threatening. Uh, minor and major anomalies are formed at different ages of pregnancy. Like uh, if pregnant woman uh, did something wrong, like she probably smoked or drank alcohol or used drugs, and if she did it at a very early age of pregnancy, uh, at the time when tissues are developed, these embryonic layers are developed, then we will deal with major anomalies, which are life or health threatening. And probably there is very high chance that this baby will not be able to live. If something wrong happened with that woman at the late gestational age, after uh, many organs in uh, the baby, in the fetus, have been already formed, and then it will be minor, cosmetic anomaly. Uh, such baby will live, but there will be some problems with his health, but not so significant. Because the most active processes of development, they occur during the first trimester, the first three months of pregnancy, even two months at the time of um, embryonic, at the embryonic stage, pre-embryonic and embryonic stage of the development, first and second stage. So there is a special science that studies these anomalies that is named teratology. It's also a Greek term. Uh, in Greek, teratos means monster. So it is the study of abnormalities of physiological development and the causes of birth defects, teratology. And so according to the scientists, the teratologists, um, 20 to 25% of these anomalies, they are genetically caused. So, you know, uh, there are, um, in some countries, there are marriages. Marriages are allowed between 
very close relatives. And in this case, some recessive diseases, some genetic diseases are very common, so it's not so good. Yes, so this is genetically, uh, genetic causes. So in 3% cases, these are intrauterine infections. In 4%, these are maternal metabolic disorders, like maybe mother suffers from diabetes mellitus and so on, or uh, obesity, yes. Uh, then 4% uh, these are environmental chemicals, like maybe it is gas pollution, maybe something else, yes. Then drugs and medication, it's less than 1%. And ionizing radiation is 1% to 2%. If there was some catastrophe, some disaster happened, maybe some accident on uh, atomic station, yes, and uh, people were living somewhere near to it, then there, is a very, there are very high chances that their children will get some anomalies, even if pregnancy comes much later than this accident because mutation in sex cell, cells has occurred and now nothing can be changed. And in 65 to 75% um, still reason of this uh, anomalies is unknown or they are multifactorial. So unfortunately we cannot prevent all the anomalies. But in Russia, for example, we are watching after pregnant women very carefully, and we are trying to prevent birth of children with different defects. That's why, for example, during one pregnancy, a woman should make ultrasonography three times to detect very early some anomalies, like, for example, some chromosomal anomalies such as Down syndrome or uh, uh, Klein-Filter syndrome and so on. And if some anomalies are detected, if these are major anomalies, then such a woman will be suggested to terminate this pregnancy, to not to give birth to such a child. Okay, that was about norms, variants, and anomalies. And the final part of our lecture, we will now talk about definitions. Yes, what is organ, what is system of organs, and what is apparatus of organs. So organ is a part of the body that is formed by definite tissues, uh, has its own location, structure, and performs definite function. And performs definite functions. Um, so, uh, yes, that is heart, lungs, liver, uh, these are examples of the organs, yes, large intestine, pancreas, ear, skin, uh, small intestine, and so on. And in anatomy, we study organs, to study the organs, we unite them into the systems of organs. So, system of organs is a group of, group of organs that work together to perform a specific function, to perform a specific function. Uh, so in, for example, there is respiratory system that consists of nasal cavity, larynx, trachea, bronchi, lungs, yes, and all of them serve together to provide respiration, breathing, gas exchange, yes. Uh, digestive system, oral cavity, salivary glands, esophagus, stomach, and so on, uh, they form digestive system. They, yes, um, for the digestion, to provide our body with nutrients. The, so the uniting factor for system of organs, it is common function. Another thing is apparatus of organs. It is a group of organs that is united by common origin. Like for example, at the beginning of the lecture, we said that uh, organs of urinary and reproductive systems both originated from intermediate mesoderm. That's why they are united into a common locomotor, sorry, urogenital apparatus. And there are some organs which will perform functions of both urinary and reproductive systems. So they are very close to each other because they have the same origin. In this semester, you will study locomotor apparatus. Uh, these are 
um, it includes bones, joints, uh, muscles, yes. And today we said that all of these structures, they are developed from somites, yes. So due to a common origin also, uh, this, all the organs can be studied together as locomotor operators. So functions of these organs are different. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that is all I wanted to tell you for today. Uh, do you have any questions? Okay, so if you have no questions, then thank you for your attention and see you next time. Goodbye.